see you. Good to be seen. Let me tell you something. It oh has boy. been so long since I have had a guest my size. <laughs> <laughs> they come in here with their height. Yeah. <laughs> I did this for you. Thank You're you. having a good day. That's you got re up for another year. That's I'm exactly just right. To help you out of here, man. I was re elected for another year. There you go. <laughs> it was uh, that easy. Right? It was that easy. <laughs> if only. Put a couple of songs up. <laughs> the question I think on everybody look, it's very clear to me people are on edge in a way I haven't seen in a very long yeah. time. In, in your mind, you're on the ground there. Who will be the president of Pennsylvania? <laughs> <laughs> My wife, Lori, will be the president of Pennsylvania. Really? It won't be me. No. She, she will win. Uh, are they tired yet of the swing state status of the constant barnstorming, your, your yeah. lovely state of Pennsylvania? I mean, look, it, it, yes and no. Mm -hmm. it, it's close, right? But, but let me just, for those of you out there kind of worrying about this, the last two presidential races in Pennsylvania came down to a less than a point. So, of course, the polls are going to be close. Now, are folks tired of maybe some of the commercials and things on TV? Yeah, but I, I think folks also understand that they have an extraordinary power here. And with that power comes a real responsibility. I think maybe the Dude, one... Dude, you can't just sit here and quote Spider-Man. <laughs> no, that's not... No. You can't just throw... No, but power comes responsibility. How about I go... Let, let me take a leap here. I want to take a leap. From Spider-Man yes. to Ben Franklin. Okay, follow me on this. <laughs> follow me on this. Ben Franklin, famously one of the signatories to the Constitution, signs mm. the Constitution, mm. walks out of Independence Hall, is greeted by a woman on those cobblestone streets of Philadelphia. She looks him in the eye and says, Mr. Franklin, what do we have here, a monarchy or a republic? Franklin looks her in the eye and says, a republic if you can keep it. Those five words, if you can keep it, that's been our calling card. That's been our charge. So, yes, we enjoy this sort of temporary status as a swing state. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you something. We've been fighting for democracy for 248 years, and I'll be damned if we're going to stand down on this task. We're going to stand up, and we're going to get the job done. Right. And I believe we're going to elect Kamala Harris next president. I see. Right. 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 By the way, yeah. by the way, I am going to ask you a question. By the way, fun fact here. Yes. Ben Franklin, my predecessor. It's true. <laughs> He's like the, what is it, the Craig Kilborn of Pennsylvania, right? Is he, he, was, really? yeah, was like the, he was the first He was host the OG yeah. of, of there. Was yeah. Ben Franklin the governor of Pennsylvania? He was. Oh, see, I, I, that, that is yeah. not something that I knew was a, a part of his yeah. story. I knew that he would walk out on the street and women would just accost him yeah. about <laughs> the form it's of government of, that we would be. Yeah, that not we, a similarity I no, share. I, that, I don't that, get that true. very much. I will say this. You know, uh, we talk a lot about democracy and fighting for freedom and all those kinds of things. Yeah. And I'm of a mindset, and it gets to something that you had done in Pennsylvania. Donald Trump, to me, is a symptom of a government that is, at times, not particularly agile and responsive to the needs of the people, mm -hmm. right? It, it's what breeds space, sometimes, for demagogues. You did something in Pennsylvania that I thought was really interesting, that I hadn't seen in a long time. Uh, 95 burned down. Yeah. There was, there, there's, for, for those of you driving in that area, 95 is, is the aorta. Yeah, that takes 76,000 cars and trucks every day. Right. It burns down, mm -hmm. and I'm immediately thinking, because, you know, I'm aware of construction projects. I live in New York City. <laughs> uh, I immediately think, well, oh, Pennsylvania is now closed. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it'll be nice. I have family there, and hopefully they'll be alive <laughs> 15 or 20 years yeah. from now. Yeah. You fixed it in what? 12 days. What, what, was, what was done? Well, first off, we brought the attitude that I talk about every day in governing, our GSD attitude, and I think I could say it here, our get shit done attitude. I think... I'm going to stop you right there. <laughs> Don't you ever f*** ourselves. <laughs> I assume I got bleep. Uh, no, uh, but, but I'm serious. Like, I, I think a lot of times folks don't have that attitude in government, and they sort of let things happen. We have a get shit done attitude. We have the best workers in the world in those Philadelphia But there are barriers. Areas. There are regulatory barriers. And we summoned everybody together. 
And when folks told me it was going to take a month to figure that out, I'd say you have an hour. When they said we need three days, I said you've got a day. And what we constantly did was push the envelope. And you know what we found? When we push people, they felt empowered. And they were able to stand up and they made decisions when they were standing on that roadway. And they were innovative and they were creative. Right. And we have the best workers in the world. And we showed that when the eyes of the world were on us in Pennsylvania, we know how to get shit done. And we got it done and we got it done in just 12 days. But that, it, it's an amazing story. But you, you understand my point, which is, oh, why aren't we doing that for housing? Why, we why, should be. Right. So for those who we are critical of, of government, yeah. You look at that situation and go, wait a minute, this can be done? And it's just a question of, so have those of us on the left who believe government still has a big role to play in people's lives, have we in some ways undercut our own argument by over-regulation or the types of things that keep us from getting shit done? Yeah, I, I think so. Look, I believe government can be a force for good in people's lives. Mm. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this work. Otherwise, I wouldn't have dedicated my life to public service. But I think sometimes you're right. Over-regulation, too much overthinking, and taking power away from the people who work in government, who have dedicated their lives to serving others. And instead, you set up a process on top of a process on top of a process, and you never actually get things done. It's one of my biggest frustrations. And by the way, I think it's one of the things, to your point earlier, that has maybe led to people feeling frustrated and yes. looking right. for others who might be dangerous, destructive forces like Donald Trump mm -hmm. to kind of shake things up, right? We've heard that before. I want to shake things up in a good way with people who give a damn about other people's lives and who want to lift people up, not tear them down. I think we're proving how to do that in Pennsylvania. So what happened with uh, 95, yeah. in 12 days you took a disaster and, and reopened it. Have you thought about doing that with the Pennsylvania Turnpike? <laughs> doing all right on the turnpike? You're not doing all right yeah. on the turnpike. Well, you're by the Jersey no, side. No, 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 yeah. no. Whenever I get on the turnpike, you get a certain point past, like, Bucks County or wherever the nice people, yeah. and then all of a sudden, the whole ride is this. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, somewhere around Happy Valley, it just goes down to what? one lane, and you're like, what the hell's going on around here? It's infrastructure night here at the Daily Show. Thank you. Oh, great. No, but listen, I mean, there's a serious point. When people see their roads being fixed, when they right. see their internet being connected, when they see the lead being taken out of their water lines so their kids can drink water and the parents don't have to worry about it, right. that's real stuff. That matters to people. That's putting points on the board for folks. That's what I'm trying to do every day in Pennsylvania. That... By the way, that's what Kamala Harris is going to do for this country. That was a, by the way, beautiful thing. Yeah. See what I did? Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. What are... So... When you had that experience with 95, yeah. did you go back into the kind of infrastructure agenda or the other things in Pennsylvania, and was it, a, was it an epiphany? Did you think to yourself, oh, I I've got to go in there with a more forceful, innovative yeah. attitude to do that? And have there been other things that have occurred that you thought, hey, man, I think we've, we've got something here in terms of yeah. a methodology? We did. I mean, let's stay with roads and bridges. Last year in Pennsylvania, as a result of that GSD attitude, we repaired more poor condition bridges than any other state in the entire country. We did that because we were aggressive, we put the funding together, and we empowered people to say, that bridge is a problem, let's get to work, let's get it done. People want to see their tax dollars go to things that benefit them, shorten their commute times, get their kids to school on time, whatever it is, and we're getting that done in, in the Commonwealth. Connect it to their, to, to their lives. Was it hard for, you know, you, you were very much talked about uh, as a vice president presidential candidate and you were vetted w were you vetted i was and and when they vetted you did they go mm. <laughs> no did they no. like after they vetted you you're like no. you see how many gummies that dude had no. on his thing like, i wish i'm pretty boring honestly the hardest part of that vetting part yeah was finding all my old taxes that was very hard yeah. how far back do they make you go yeah it goes back pretty far one night i'm sitting there on the floor on all fours Trying to go through all the paperwork. Yeah, I don't need to know that. No, 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 no. <laughs> and my wife walks in and she goes... Boy. I walked into that, didn't I? A little bit. I did. You walked into that My wife walks fours. in and she looks at me and goes, if only the American people could see you right now. I'm literally just trying to find our text. Well, right now they're imagining it. And... Uh... <laughs> Uh, but it does surprise me. Doesn't the federal government have your tax records? Yeah, I don't know. Look, they, they asked... <laughs> there wasn't much to see, John. 
<laughs> All right. Can we be done now? Because no. I feel like Stay. I need to. Uh, yeah. So uh, you're on all fours. Yes. <laughs> So, so this is uh, not uh, where I thought this were was going to go. Were you? Was it? Was it disappointing? Was there a feeling that you had of like, you know, people said like, oh, it's because he's Jewish, or, or too ambitious? Like, was there something inside you that thought, what was it that? No. Okay. Not at all. Listen, first off, Kamala Harris made an outstanding pick in Tim. Yeah, Wall. He's, he's done it. He's a great guy. His wife Gwen is great friends with my wife Lori. These are great public servants, mm -hmm. and Tim Walls is going to be a great vice president of the United States, and I am all in for Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. Right. And, you're, and you've been, by the way, yeah. really barnstorming Pennsylvania. I mean, you're, you're really... To you, what's the key in Pennsylvania that you believe, like, he's got a tremendous amount of strength, you think, in, in the, the rural areas? Does it come down, once again, to sort of the suburbs of Bucks County? Is it about turnout in Philadelphia? What, what are the parameters of what makes... Pennsylvania's a complicated place. Yeah. Look, I, I guess the answer is all of the above, right? Right. You mentioned Bucks County, pretty swingy county in a swing state. Sure. Turnout in Philly is critically important. But don't write off those rural areas. I spent a lot of time out there, spent a lot of time listening to folks delivering for them. They'll vote for a Democrat. The good news is Kamala Harris. Well, they did. Up. I mean, they, they, years ago, those were really blue areas, the, yeah. the blue collar areas. Yep. And, and look, some of that's changed over time. But part of it is, I think, they've been you know, sort of thirsting for someone who's going to speak to their challenge. I'll give you one example yep. of that. When I was running for governor, I spent a lot of time in those communities. I remember being in a, in a hunt club in Butler County, and one of the folks was talking to me about the fact that they feel like they can never get ahead. They don't have a college degree. Right. They feel like they can never get ahead. And that folks in government are never actually talking to them, never actually trying to lift them up. First thing I did when I got elected governor, literally first executive order I signed, was doing away with the college degree requirement for 92% of state government jobs. It's 66,000 jobs. That's a requirement. You can't work now, in state government without a college degree? You couldn't degree? afford. Now you can. Are most but, states that way, or is, is that... I can't speak to the other states, right, but right. A, a whole lot of states... I'm surprised by that. Pallies, a lot of the private sector things. We set these artificial barriers to entry where folks aren't given a shot. Listen, I, I think pe people should have the freedom to chart their own course and the opportunity to succeed. And when you say to someone, hey, we don't value your military service. We don't value your service in a union just because you didn't go to college. That says to a whole swath of the public, we're not into you. We're not there for you. Well, Kamala Harris, she's showing up in those communities that I spend a whole lot of time in, and she announced that the federal government would be doing away with that college degree requirement, opening up the doors of opportunity right. small to more people. As it should be. I didn't even I know that was a requirement, quite frankly. I think Democrats should never write off these rural communities. We've got to show up, we've got to speak right. to people, and we've got to make sure we show them that we can deliver for them. You know, I'm surprised sometimes because I do hear that a lot about, oh, people don't talk to those communities. But, you know, in general, I think there's a great deal of respect for heartland communities. If anything, I've always felt kind of the opposite, that there's this feeling that that's real America and that in areas, you know, in the cities and things like that, that that is, uh, that that's looked down upon or that's yeah. uh, ridiculed. So I think all of those communities, maybe it's, it's less of a blue-red state divide and more of an urban-rural kind of divide. Yeah, look, I think you get in trouble if you ever say one part of America is more real than any other part of America. That doesn't well, They do that all the time. I mean, they there's do. a lot of, like, they all do. you remember is, oh, the Democrats are communists who don't live in real America, yeah. and, and... I think the Republicans do that. I, I think what Democrats are doing a far better job of, and I think you're seeing it more and more in this campaign, mm -hmm. is treating all people with respect, no matter what you look like, where you come from, who you love or who you pray to. Look, that's one of the biggest beefs I have with Donald Trump. I mean, he is always trying to create others in our society, separating people out. You talked about this in your opening. When you start separating it out one person, because they live in this community, right. or they worship a certain way, you make everyone less safe. You limit the possibility of not just them, but of all Americans. Well, it's also easy. I mean, it's, you know, what they're, they're not just separating people. They're separating the people who are most vulnerable. I mean, I, I live in New York City. Every commercial is either we're being overrun by hordes of uh, gang members that are illegal or trans people are taking over uh, all of women's sports. And you, you really do think sometimes, like, oh, shit. They are? Like, it, like it actually, like, it, it gets to you, and, and you realize, like, oh, that's a strategy. 
to find the most vulnerable people yep. that people don't uh, uh, really protect and blow it out to be uh, as though it's the most crucial issue that, that anybody could see. I mean, dividing us. Look, Donald Trump plays a game every day of subtraction, right? I think we're trying to play a game of addition, bringing more people into right. the conversation, engaging more people. I think when you divide people the way Trump is, you may get some short-term political win. Like the presidency. <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> Let's hope not. No, no, I'm just saying. But I think it's dangerous and destructive right. for America. Uh, dangerous and destructive for America. Here, here's another one. And they're saying that this may be one of the crucial uh, issues of the entire election, which is uh, Israel, Gaza, yeah. uh, Palestine. You and I are both, uh, I'd say, five foot seven ish Jews. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I go with five nine on my, uh, you know, on my card. I'm sure yeah. you do. Yeah. <laughs> If you need me to scribble on yeah. that card for you, I'd be happy yeah. to. Where are we going with this, John? Uh, <laughs> so I find that b because I'm Jewish, people turn to me and immediately go, like, Israel will do something, and they'll turn to me and go, you're going to let that happen? Yeah. Well, you and, must be an expert. Right? Uh, you must be an expert yeah. or something like yeah. that. But in truth, I, I want to know your level of discomfort with uh, the way things are progressing and, and what uh, impact it may have on the election here, because you and I are both raised probably in a very similar way yeah. to always be on the side of Israel and never again and all those other things. And it's been really uncomfortable mm -hmm. to have big cracks in that facade for me. Yeah. And I wonder if you face the same thing. Yeah. I mean, look, obviously, folks ask me about it all the time, as I'm sure they ask you. I haven't found it. My job description is governor of Pennsylvania, but I'm happy to oblige and right. address it. You don't get to make treaties and things like that. No, no, we don't, we don't do that. You never thought about uh, attacking Delaware? <laughs> <laughs> I do think we could take them, but I do love Delaware. No problem. L listen, um, I have enough capacity in my heart uh, to mourn for the Israelis for what happened on October 7th. Mm -hmm. It was horrible. Hamas is a terrorist group, and Hamas murdered 1,200 people. They took 250 people hostage, including Americans, John. Mm -hmm. And they brutally raped and sexually assaulted women. It was awful. And I have a lot of capacity in my heart to mourn for those and to feel horrible for what happened there. I also have the capacity in my heart to see what's happening in Gaza to these innocent folks, these women and children. And I mourn for them as well. I want these hostages home. I want this war to end. And I want us to figure out a way. Why? Because that it, it seems like the logical human answer, yeah. which is, oh, I mourn for the hostages and I mourn for those lives lost. And I also think uh, what's happening in Gaza is untenable and, and tragic and, and a, a catastrophe. So why do we feel so helpless? It just, how, how are we not able to impact and bring that to a close, do you, have you, do you think about how that will come to a close? How do we get uh, a free and safe uh, Israel and a free and safe and independent Palestine? Well, look, my hope is that yeah. with the hostages immediately returned home, with an end to this war, that we can create an environment, not just in Israel and in Gaza, but throughout the Middle East, where folks want peace, where we actually have leaders who are willing to make peace. Well, I, I would think the folks do. It seems like the leaders are the ones. I, I'm, so yeah, I'm yeah. getting at it. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to be real here. I mean, look, Hamas is a terrorist group. They're not interested in making peace. Now, I would argue Benjamin Netanyahu is not interested in making peace. And so you've got people who are, in theory, mm -hmm. supposed to be sitting at the table and discussing ways to try and help their people exist who don't actually want that. Now, I'm not putting Netanyahu on the same scale as a terrorist group. I want to be really clear and really precise in my words. But we have got to involve a broader Middle East coalition. We've got to involve other nations of the world who will hopefully be able to come in and create the opportunity for a secure Israel, for a peaceful place for Palestinians to be able to live. Independent free state. Economic so, opportunities. I do believe... Yeah. No, no. Yeah. I do believe in a two-state solution, and I have for some time. Yeah. I agree with you. Look at this. This is...
By the way, what is happening right now is every Passover dinner throughout generally my entire lifetime. Is this what it is? Yeah, I have. So most of my relatives are not uh, politically aligned with wh where I am. Okay. Uh, and so a lot of times at dinner, uh, it gets it gets feisty. Does it? <laughs> do you win those arguments? I do not. Mm. Uh, it generally ends uh, with with them just going then leave. <laughs> In your own home, or...? Usually in yeah. my own home. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, well, uh, listen, man, I know these are all uh, difficult conversations, those kinds of things. I appreciate you being here. Uh, any advice for those who are just trying to survive that, that final week and getting to the election, and any uh, advice to people that have friends in Pennsylvania that can urge them uh, to do anything to get involved? Well, I would say to anybody here from New York, hop on a train, hop on a bus, hop in your car, bike, whatever, come to Pennsylvania, knock on some doors, and take the, the sort of energy that you have and channel it into action. We could use a whole lot more help there. We've got a hell of a ground game in Pennsylvania. We mm -hmm. welcome people to support us. And the people of Pennsylvania, if, let's say, we were all to show up on bicycles... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would not show up in a Mets hat. I would not show up in a Giants jersey. Do you know right? I have a bet? So, yeah. Jalen Brunson of the, the Knicks, right? I He's remember him. The point guard. Villanova. Villanova. Yep. yep. So, he bet me that if the Giants lose to the Eagles, I have to come to Madison Square Garden in a Saquon Barkley Eagles Ooh. jersey. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you remember, uh, the Eagles beat the Giants. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember. And so, I, I have to go through that uh, uh, humiliation. Yeah, I look forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Governor Josh Shapiro.